Welcome to the second part of my video about the book, A Practitioner's Tool for Child Protection and the Assessment of Parents. Go back where we left off. We are on the tick box lists in this book, which are the criteria by which a social worker may judge a parent and assess whether they are safe to be in custody of their children. So where were we? We'd got over whether somebody was actually violent or not towards children. And the next step is, has she or he ever neglected or ill-treated a child in any way? Which is one of those questions that is a bit uh, as long as a piece of string. And this is how social workers get round things, really, and start twisting things. Because um, there was a story in the papers recently about a little boy who's mother I don't think she would give him the haircut that he wanted and then they said that she wouldn't give him an ice cream on one particular occasion and that was considered um, abusive because he wasn't allowed to express his personality wasn't allowed his freedom to get the sort of haircut that he wanted and so on which really is it's kind of ridiculous you know <laughs> it's no wonder that newspapers laugh at social workers sometimes when you read things like that are concerns held about his or her care of children? I think what this means is things like, ha has a neighbour reported them? Are there concerns from the school? But, you know, concerns can be major or minor, can't they? There's a concern that a child, for example, has very dirty clothes. is more of a concern than some other things like they didn't do their reading for two nights in a row or something like that. But of course, it's a tick box thing, so make of it what you will. Does she or he place his or her needs above those of children? Because of course, social workers consider that children must always be put first. Although there's a saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. So this kind of attitude is, is very unhelpful, really. <laughs> you, you need to look after yourself as well as your children. And those things need to be on a more even footing, I think, because being continually self-sacrificing is very weakening to any person. We all have needs. But that just shows you the attitude of social workers. You're meant to be entirely self-sacrificing in order to be considered a good parent. Is there a lack of insight into the child's needs? Is there a failure to anticipate the child's needs? Is there a lack of concern for the child? All these things are very kind of wishy-washy and grey, aren't they? One of the points that I'm trying to make in this is it really isn't about, if you think of a, a case like Baby P, where he was kind of black and blue and in and out of A&E all the time, it makes this kind of thing just seem ridiculous. Anticipating child's needs. I mean, there's basic safety. They can't even make sure that a child is basically safe, can they? Sorry, this is, it's not the best picture viewer for zooming in and out of things. Anyway, right. Is the child attending at school or arriving late for school? So either of those things are viewed um, in a bad light. I think far too much emphasis is put on this, especially with families that have some difficulties for example i'm i'm disabled and i might face difficulties with getting my children there on time i don't see why it should be such a massive deal as it is i've always absolutely made sure my children are on time because this sort of thing absolutely scares me to death 
I don't really see why it's such a massive deal, but apparently it is. Is the child ever inappropriately dressed? Now, those of you who have got lively children such as I have, sometimes your kids might decide it's a cold day and they want to go out in uh, a summer dress or something like that. Obviously, you can't let them go out without a coat and, and the rest of things, but there are, you know, this is so loosely defined. What's inappropriately dressed? I allow my children some freedom to make decisions about how they dress, even if some of those things, you know, they want to wear their wellies on a hot day. How much does that matter as long as they're not boiling hot? If it's going to cause them to have a complete meltdown. Anyway, I think you can probably see what my point is there. It's the ability of social workers to make more of something than it is. So they might fuss about what a child is wearing when really they need to be looking for children who are uh, neglected and they're harmed and that kind of thing. The, the child who is who permanently has head lice, the child whose clothes aren't washed ever, Does the child have responsibilities beyond his or her age? This is another one they like to use to get the disabled parents that are using, or the way they look at it is using children as their carers, which again is something I've always been very careful about. But as we know, social workers are very keen on getting their crystal balls out and making judgments. In my files, it does actually say one of the social workers says, what about when my child gets older and how will I carry her then? And there were real concerns over it. But actually, I was able to carry my baby at that point in time. And as children get older, you don't need to carry them so much anyway. <laughs> so they, they really are fond of being expert on things that they have no ability to be expert in. And they make really ridiculous judgments about things. Also, some of you are probably thinking, when you were a kid, you had some responsibilities. For example, it might have been your job to lay the table or when you were a bit older to do the washing up and certainly to tidy your room and things like that. <laughs> so I actually don't think it's a good thing that children have no responsibilities and their parents do everything for them. That isn't really preparing your child for life. Has the child ever been reported because of child protection concerns? Which is funny because sometimes what social services do is they have a good old ring round. Even if, if they're not supposed to and it's actually breaking the law, they break the law all the time and they just rely on people not knowing that they're breaking the law and it being kept a secret, which they expect all their buddies to, um, to do. When I say buddies, I mean things like doctors and nursery staff and things like that. Because basically what happens is once you're involved with these people, they are all spying on you. So they ring up somebody, they'll know what nursery or what playgroup you take the child to. And they'll ring the staff there and ask them to keep an eye on you and they'll expect them to report back. Once a person knows that there's interest from social services, they look really hard for things that indicate neglect or abuse. And they find them, even when they are not there. If they're not there, they kind of invent them because they're so convinced there must be something wrong for a social worker to be involved. So they kind of look at everybody's behavior and make lots of it completely. The whole situation really is usually a mountains out of molehills situation. Has the child ever complained about the care received at home? Oh my God. 
Yeah, my mummy gave me burgers when I wanted turkey Twizzlers. It's terribly abusive. <laughs> anyway, I think you probably get the impression that many of these things are, for example, your friends. If you had a friend who was a heavy drinker but you aren't, suddenly you're the one who is regarded as being potentially a bad parent. If you are out of work for a time, well then, that makes you a bad parent. There's so many things on that list that really just about anyone is a bad parent. And this is why so many people are finding that once social services are in their life, it's impossible to get them out. And especially if you consider a social worker does not really like going round to the house of somebody like Baby P's parents. Whereas you might be a lower middle class person who makes them a nice cup of tea. And it's easier for them to spend every six weeks coming round to your house and keeping the case going so that they don't have to go round to Baby P's mum's house, so to speak. Anyway, I hope this informs people and is helpful in some way. We still have a long way to go in terms of convincing everybody that this situation is happening. Most people don't like to think that this is what social work is about. But unfortunately, it is. And if ever you are in that situation, it's better to be armed and aware. The advice that I always give to people is, don't treat social workers like they are your friend because any information that you give them is used against you. Just regard it a bit like, like they were the police and you've got the right idea. Any conversation with them should be what I call weather conversations. So it's, oh, hello, what a lovely day it is. And you don't start talking about uh, problems you may have had with the rest of your family or anything like that. Just don't do it because it will suddenly turn into an absolute living hell. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting or informative, do like and subscribe and all that um, YouTube stuff.